Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right, we're live with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have Roderick with us. Roderick is the consummate real estate professional. He is the capital man. Glad to have him here. He has strong experience in transactional finance and structuring complex real estate transactions with sponsors. Um, he helps clients who are looking for debt and equity for acquiring commercial real estate assets. I'm super excited to talk to him because I just lost a deal for my own uh, financing faux pas. So Roderick, super happy to have you. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm excited to be here. All right. Uh, I was telling you this before we jumped on the show. We always start with stories. We like to hear how people got from point A to point B. Um, mm -hmm. So how'd you get started? What, uh, what got you into real estate in the first place? Yeah. So I'm make a long story short. So here we go. I got started in real estate through single family. Okay. And I started like when I was in college, I was like trying to start businesses. I started a couple of different businesses, consumer electronics, social media marketing. Then I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and realized I didn't need as much money as I thought to get into real estate. So then once I graduated, I came to Atlanta. I went to like a, a real estate meeting or a RIA meeting and said, you know, hey, I'm a wholesaler and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Everybody <laughs> laughed. They said, you're in the right place. And then from that day, you know, I started building my buyer's list. I didn't have a car, so I was riding my bike all around town. Wow. You know, I would go to homeowner's house, knock on the homeowner's door on a bicycle and say, you know, this looks like a great house. I'll buy it from you. Right. And the homeowner, you know, the the nerve of me to do it without a car is just crazy. And the homeowner <laughs> would look at me like, this kid, what talking? he's talking about he's going to buy my house and he's riding a bike. You know, and so after we closed on a couple of deals doing wholesale, the homeowner was like, to be honest, when you first came and knocked on my door, I didn't believe you were going to do it because you just didn't look the part. And so it was so crazy. Like people would take me to the train station and I would still buy their house. And it's just like it just didn't make sense, but it worked. And so I got into that. I love that because it just goes to show, you know, people always have expectations of what you should be doing, but really just mm -hmm. get out there and get busy, man. If you got a yeah. bike, ride the bike. That's all you got to do. There's nothing yes. that matters. That's awesome, man. Congratulations for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so um, I just realized I wanted to do it. So I did it. And then I started like seeing like commercial real estate people at the, um, at the meetups or at the mm -hmm. meetings that I was going to. And they would always be like, you're working too hard. You're, you know, you're doing all of that running around. Too much and they're just, yeah, they're always just chilling and look like they're having fun. So I'm like, okay, sh you know, teach me what you guys know. So that way I can do it. Nobody really wanted to teach me. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. So then I wanted to stop wholesaling and fixing flipping because I was like, I'm making, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 30,000. But once I, you know, once that deal is done, I have, you know, I'm looking for the next deal. I'm always going. And if I don't have a deal, I'm the stressed out because I don't know where the money is coming from. And so I said, I wanted to buy a hundred units all over this, all over town, hundred single family rentals. And then that's when I figured out about multifamily. I said, if I do a hundred units all over town, that means I have to drive to those places 
and property management, that's going to be a nightmare. So then I said, I'll get all of my units in one place. When I found out about multifamily, I'm like, I can get a hundred doors in one place. Sign me up. I'm in the game. I'm doing it. Once you go commercial, you never go back. Yes, that is a hundred (laughs) percent true. And so I, um, I started listening to podcasts, started doing everything. And then I put together my first, first meetup saying, you know, I want to buy a hundred units, blah, blah, blah. Don't know nothing about nothing, but I do know what I want to do. And so I put it out there, started doing it. And that's how we got here into commercial real estate, put together a couple of deals in Atlanta, $28 million deals, $50 million deals. Those, some of those deals, most of the deals fell apart, but as a owner operator, me putting together the deals, I realized that I really like the money aspect of it. Growing up, I always like find money, but you know, people would say you can't like money and the real term is finance. So I like finance. That's the easier way to say I like money. And so um, I like the way the dollar works. I like how you can break it down in seven different pieces and put it back together. I like how a dollar is nothing but a piece of paper, but depending on who you give it to, that's what it becomes. So if I loan it to you, it's debt. If I invest it with you, it's equity. And, you know, it's so many layers to the dollar. It's just not a dollar. It's just whatever you give it, whatever value you put on it, that's what it is. And so doing all of that, I realized that I really like the financial aspect of it. I like the money aspect of it. And I just want to place money into deals rather than run the deals myself. And that's how we got here. Makes uh, makes sense, man. Man, that is a that is a great story. I love that it started out on a bike and then it uh, it went all the way up to now you're just placing equity. Um, yes. That is a, a great trajectory. So, uh, yep. so it's a good, good success story. Glad, glad you came on to talk about it. You, uh, you know, before we came on, you were talking about the multifamily capital stack. Mm-hmm. Um, now I know we have multifamily in front of capital stack, but it really can be interchanged with other things. So why don't you kind of explain what you mean by the capital stack? Yeah. So the capital stack is basically the way people stack capital. So it's basically exactly what it sounds like. So it's the capital stack. It's the way you stack money on top of each other. And so when people's buying commercial real estate or if anybody's buying a commercial property or if anybody's buying a property, period, everybody has a capital stack. And the normal stack that we see is the 75-25, meaning that you're going to put 75% debt down and you're going to you know, bring 25% equity to the table or you're going to raise 25% of the equity. But the capital stack can be formed in many different layers, many different ways. And the the right term is tranches. You can do a lot of different tranches in a capital stack, but we'll keep it simple and call it layers for now. So you can put different layers. And so the full stack that I, that I, that's in my head, you know, we're talking about it like it's pancakes or something, but you have the traditional stack and then you have the full stack. So the traditional stack is 75, 25, 75% debt, 25% equity. And then you have the full stack where you have, you know, 60% senior debt, and then you may have 20% pref equity or mezzanine debt, and then you may have um, 20% common equity. Okay. And so what this allows you to do is, you know, come to the table with less equity because sometimes the mezzanine piece can go up to 85% where the sponsor only has to bring 50%. But every deal is different. And some deals, you know, the traditional stack works. Some deals, the traditional stack doesn't work. And you can just layer in different pieces of the capital stack to make the the financing work for you. Makes sense to me. Um, So you're talking about basically laying on different types of debt. um, And, you know, different situations require different combinations of debt. So what would you, uh, you know, the traditional 75, 25, um, you'd go to a bank, they give you uh, 75% of the value as a loan, you put 25% down. Um, that's what works for, you know, most of the deals out there. So yep. what would you, what situations do people run into where they, where they need to find some other type of, uh, of financing structure? Yeah, that's a good question. So most people run into the structure I see is when, I mean, where they need to find some type of other financing structure is when they're raising money for deals. You know, so if you're raising money for the deals and you don't have all the equity, that's a perfect situation because, you know, what you're trying to do is bring the amount of money that the amount of common equity that you need to raise down. And so if the bank has stopped at 75 percent and you can get somebody to give you pref equity or MES financing, they can bring that capital stack or that loan to cost up to 85 percent. 
So instead of you bringing 25, you're only bringing 15 percent to the table. And so when you're raising capital, it's just another layer to help you not raise as much. And so um, that can range from a lot of different ranges, depending mm -hmm. on the deal. Yep. But it's a significant difference in raising five million or only having to bring, you know, two million to the table because, you know, the pref equity has took it up, taken it up to 85 percent or raising 10 million and only have to come up with 5 million because pref equity took half of it away. And so it's, it, it works, it works fantastically, but a lot of people just don't use it because, you know, they don't understand it or they feel like, you know, they're giving a lot of their deal away to, you know, somebody who can come in and, and ultimately kick them out of the way, but that's only if they don't do what they're supposed to do. So if a sponsor doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then the property goes back to the lender. The property goes back to the bank. The property goes back to the pref equity person. That that's ha that happens. But the whole thing that lenders want to do is give you the money and let you run the deal because they don't run deals. They only place money out. That's not their expertise. Yep. The moment they have to take a deal back, that's the moment the deal goes down to the trash because they don't know how to run it. We don't know how to run it. You know, it's just it's going down in value as soon as it comes back from foreclosure or whatever process it goes through. Yep. Yep. No. So, and, um, before, uh, before we got on here, I said, I was going to bring up a kind of a case study. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, hearing you right now, it sounds like, um, well, I'm just going to run you through it and see what you think. The main question that we ran into is how do you raise large sum or larger sums of money? So we've never raised, um, we needed 5.6 million. The, mm -hmm. the situation was, um, there was a self storage facility, the purchase price of 5.6 million, the seller would not give us um, enough documentation to verify uh, for the banks um, his mm -hmm. income for the property. That's scary for a lot of investors. We did a lot of due diligence. We knew this was a deal. Um, and so we still wanted to move forward, but we couldn't get lending on it because nobody would you know, give out a loan without proof of fund, proof of uh, the, the gross revenue that was coming in. Mm -hmm. So we yep. had to raise all of the money. Um, I know five, six is not a lot for some big guys out there for us. It was a lot. Um, so we, we ran into that wall, um, and we were like, shit, we really want to finish this deal, but we can't because, well, we could have, um, but we just didn't have enough timeline to raise that five, six. Yep. So when people run into situations where they need to raise more money than they've raised before, um, and they don't have mm -hmm. that in their immediate network, what kind of suggestions would you give out to them to, uh, to raise the equity? Aha. Uh -huh. That is a great question. I love this question because this, this is exactly what I do all the time, every single day. So okay. it's, it's not necessarily, it's just, you know, I like put, you know, breaking down the dollar, putting it back together. So in this case, you're looking to raise $5 million. You become the bank at this point, you know? And so when I say you become the bank, when you're raising, you can raise money from investors and tell them, hey, you know, we're raising $5 million for this property. However, you know, your security in this property is that you're going to be in the first lien position. Hmm. So at that point, you will raise the debt, the same debt that you would get from the bank. You will raise it. And then let's say you're promising investors an interest rate of 6% or 5%. So you say, I need you to invest $100,000 and I will pay you back 5% on your money and it's secured by the property. And the term is going to be five years. And so, you know, they'll lend you the money. Because at this point, they're lenders, so they don't have any equity into the deal. Mm. So they're just lending you the money so that way they can generate this interest rate of 5 to 6%. You pay them back, you keep the equity, you go. So you can do this all day long. It's just finding the right people. And if you don't have the right people, you can reach out to like, you know, a capital, uh, a capital advisor. You can reach out to a mortgage broker. And you can reach out to a ton of different sources. Traditional mortgage brokers don't like working deals like this because they don't know how to do it. But when you're reaching out to like a capital advisory firm or a capital capital advisor, you can literally lay out your situation. And then from there, we just craft it and make sure that, OK, you need to be here. You need to raise a senior debt fund and then you need to raise a common equity fund. Because if you, if you do a 75 percent debt, if you take that five million, take it in 75, you know, the senior investors who are very safe and don't want to lose their money, you can put them in that first layer of 75 percent give them the debt, pay them back the interest rate of 5%. And then from there, you'll have like a, a smaller portion of it. Um, I don't know the exact math, but let's, let's say it's 2 million that you have left to raise for equity. But we could do, 
Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Times 0.25. So 1.4 million would be uh, would 25% of 5.6. Okay. So now you're only left with 1.5 million to, to do common equity. And that's where you give equity kickers and, uh, you know, the the profit splits or the promotes or however you want to do it by saying, okay, you know, once we hit this hurdle of 8%, we'll pray you a 8% pref. After we hit that 8% pref hurdle, then we'll do, you know, 70, 30 split. After we hit that 12% pref hurdle, then we'll do a 50, 50 split from there. And so from there, you raise the, the bulk of the money in senior debt, pay them a lower interest rate. So that way you keep your cost of capital low. And then you raise the 1.2 higher cost of capital but those people are, are ready to take more risk and they're willing to take more risk. Or if your investors are cool with it, you can just raise hundred percent of it in senior debt, put them in a senior debt position and you keep all the equity and they just get the, the 6% interest rate. Interesting. That's uh. so yeah, the, the, see, this is what I love running a podcast is that you always get to learn from the, the professionals who are doing stuff that you do not know about. So mm -hmm. you're saying you um, basically, go to a capital advisory firm and you can raise the full amount, which I've never done. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, they, so generally those guys, they, they pool money from many different investors. Um, Correct. you're saying that all of those investors can be in first position. Yep. You can put all investors in first position if they're cool with the risk, because the risk is the biggest variable for investors. Interesting. Okay. See, there mm -hmm. you go. You learn something new every day and I learned something just now. So thank you very much. Um, I just yeah. checked the clock though. We already hit the 20 minute mark. So I got to push us into the quick question round, which sucks right. because I want to learn a little bit more about this. So we'll probably talk after the show. But okay. the first question is about books because I'm a big bookie. So why don't you tell me mm -hmm. two book recommendations, one for general life wisdom and one for uh, real estate specific. Okay. I'm going to go with the general life wisdom, the carpenter. The carpenter. Okay. But I think John Gordon. It may be by John Gordon, but The Carpenter. It's a brown book and it has a a um a uh what is the thing that you call it? A toolbox on the front of it, a wooden toolbox. Huh. Okay. And it catches you off guard, but it's a really, really good book. It's about love, care, and serve. Sold me. I love it. Yeah. How about yep. uh, real estate? Real estate. I don't want to do the classic rich dad, poor dad, but that book has <laughs> definitely changed my life. Um real estate. We're just going to go with, with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We're yeah, going to go there. It's a, it's a solid one. You can't go wrong yeah. going Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It started, it started my journey too, so I'm right there with you. Yeah, All right, yeah, next, yeah. Question, next question is, uh, is habits. Habits form the foundation of our lives. Um, so what is one thing that you do day in, day out, that you feel contributes the most to your overall health, well-being, and success? Workout. I work out. I love I'm, it. I'm, yeah, I'm doing 75 hard by Andy Frisilla two times a day, drinking a gallon of water, following a diet, no cheat meals, no alcohol, five minute cold shower, 10 minute visualization and eight power tasks. But Damn. discipline is the number one thing. But working out, it changes your whole everything. You feel good about yourself. You feel good about your body. You feel good about what you put out. <laughs> you must feel like Superman right now. That sounds really hard. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Yeah. Next question. Um, this one is for your younger self. So if you could go back to the Roderick who, uh, you know, didn't know anything about real estate, he was just getting out there, you know, jumping on his bike, going, thinking about going out and, and knocking on doors, um, go back to him, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Yes, that is a good question. So one piece of advice moving forward is don't think, just go. And the reason I say that is I spent a lot of time thinking about what I should have done and, you know, but if I just would have went, I would be a lot further. And so just go, don't think everything, you don't have to have all the pieces laid out and you don't need anybody's approval. Most people are going to tell you you can't do it, but don't think, just go. I, I love that. That's one of the reasons why uh, Nike's, you know, just do it has been one of my favorite, um, at least company slogos out there, because that's mm -hmm. true. If you, if you think about it, the instant you start ruminating about it, it's just, you, you've already lost because thoughts are never going to, they're never going to line up and you just got to go yep. out there and take the action and just watch things line up behind you because your thoughts are never, never going to tell you yes. Yep. 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 All right. Next question. Um, all right. Just looking, I lost my place on my piece of paper. There it is. Okay. So United States, it's a big place. There's, I don't know how many square miles out there, but there's a lot of them. Um, which mm -hmm. means there's a lot of places to buy property. So if you could point to one place in the U S that you 
are most excited to put your hard-earned dollars, where would that place be? One place? Um, I'm going to go with Atlanta. I'm going to go Atlanta. with Atlanta. That this... is a solid market right now. It is crushing it for sure. Yeah, it's a lot of growth happening. Different places in the city are doing really big things. And yeah, it's just so many places where you can build and grow. And Perfect. it's just a blank canvas for sure. I love it. Um, so that brings us to our last question. And this one is for the listeners. You've given us a lot of good advice um, and I'm sure people want to reach out. So what is the best way for them to get in contact with you? Yeah, perfect. So you can reach out to me on all social media at Roderick Jones, or you can go to RoderickJones.com or you can go to a party capital markets.com. And then if you want to send me an email, it's Roderick. R O D as in dog, D as in dog, R I C K at a party capital markets.com. Perfect. And I will put those uh, links in the show notes. So if you guys want to get, get in contact with Roderick, just cl click the little more um, in the description. It'll pop down the full description in there. You can find the links, click through, say hi to Roderick. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, thank Perfect. you very much for hopping on the show. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. No problem. Thank you for having me. This has re really been dope. And for everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason that we do this. So we appreciate having you here. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the real estate investing club.com. Other than that, hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level. I've created an ebook just for you available on our website this ebook e will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of, uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.